Welcome, deep divers. Ready to unlock some brain power. Always ready for a deep dive. Today, we're going deep into the world of neuroscience. Really diving into those the... amazing cells that make up our brains. Neurons. They're how we think, how we feel. How we do everything. They're the messengers of the body. And we've got some really cool sources today. Oh, yeah, some fascinating stuff. Academic presentations with some incredible images of neurons. They're like little branching trees. It's a whole forest inside your head. Exactly, a forest of neurons. But before we get lost in the visuals... Right, let's lay the groundwork. Let's start with the basics, expert. What exactly is a neuron? Why are these little guys such a big deal? So imagine... Uh, the most complex communication network you can think of. Okay, got it. Buzzing with trillions of signals every second. That's your nervous system. And neurons are the stars. They're the ones sending all those messages. Exactly. Neurons are specialized cells okay. that transmit information. Using? Both electrical and chemical signals, constantly sending messages throughout your body. So everything we do all boils down to those signals. Yep. Thinking, feeling, moving, sense. It's all about neurons doing their thing. Amazing. And you mentioned that these neurons come in different shapes and sizes. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's not one size fits all in the brain. So what's the deal with all the different shapes? Well, just like tools in a toolbox, each neuron's shape is tailored to its specific job. So form follows function. Makes sense. Exactly. Some are short and bushy for quick communication over short distances. Like a quick text message. And then others are long and slender, stretching like those long distance cables. So they're relaying signals across different parts of the brain. Exactly. Long distance calls. It's incredible how something so small can be so specialized. It really is. Speaking of small, our source material mentioned these incredibly detailed drawings of neurons. Oh yeah, those are amazing. By this guy, Santiago Ramon y Cajal. A true pioneer in neuroscience. But how did he even see the neurons in the first place, let alone draw them in such detail? Well, he used a revolutionary technique at the time called the Grogi stain. It was groundbreaking. How does it work? It uses silver to stain individual neurons, making them stand out against all the other cells. So it's like highlighting them, making them easier to see. Yeah, exactly. It creates a stark contrast, making them pop out under the microscope. Like developing a photo, bringing mm -hmm. those hidden neurons to life. Exactly. That's incredible. But even with these detailed images, I can't help but think neurons can't possibly be doing all this alone, right? You're right. They've got a whole team. Like a pit crew. Kind of. <laughs> They've got these cells called glial cells. Glial cells. They're the unsung heroes of the brain, making sure everything runs smoothly behind the scenes. What kind of stuff are they doing back there? They do a lot. For example, we've got astrocytes, the guardians of the brain. Guardians of the brain. Sounds important. They're crucial for regulating the blood-brain barrier. Okay, the blood-brain barrier, that rings a bell. It's like a filter, right? Yeah, think of it like a security checkpoint. It controls what can get into the brain from the bloodstream. So the astrocytes are like the security guards? Exactly. They make sure only the good stuff gets in, keeping the brain environment stable. Okay, so that's the astrocytes. What other kinds of glial cells are there? Well, there's another type called oligodendrocytes, and these guys are the master insulators. Insulators? Like for electrical wires? Exactly. They wrap around neurons, kind of like those protective sleeves you put on cables. To keep the signals from getting crossed. You got it. And that insulation is called myelin, which is super important for speeding up those electrical signals. So faster signals mean? Faster thoughts, faster reactions, faster everything. And I'm guessing without those oligodendrocytes doing their job, things could go haywire. Exactly. It'd be like trying to send a high-speed internet signal through a rusty old wire. Things would get messed up. So these glial cells are crucial. Absolutely. Remember those images of healthy versus damaged myelin we mentioned earlier? Yeah, I was just about to bring those up. Those were pretty powerful. In diseases like multiple sclerosis, the myelin gets attacked, which really highlights just how vital these glial cells are for a healthy brain. It really makes you appreciate those unsung heroes. For sure. Yeah. They're essential for a healthy and functioning brain. So we've got all these neurons firing, these intricate circuits, but how do we even begin to see this microscopic world in action? It's like trying to listen to a symphony happening inside a seashell. That's where things get really exciting. Tell me more. Over the years, we've developed some pretty amazing tools to peer inside that seashell and listen to the brain symphony. You're talking brain scans. Yeah, and we'll get into all of that, but first let's talk about a classic tool that's still used today. Lead the way. What are we using to tune into those brain waves? All right, lead the way. 
What are we using to tune into those brain waves? Let's start with a classic. Yeah. Electroencephalography, or EEG for short. EEG, I've heard of that one. It's been around for ages, but it's still super useful, especially because it's non-invasive. Non-invasive, so no surgery required. Exactly. We're talking about placing electrodes on the scalp, kind of like those sticky pads they use in hospitals. Okay, I can picture that. And those electrodes are picking up on. The electrical activity of your neurons. Hmm. It's pretty amazing. So instead of looking directly at the neurons, we're listening in on their electrical conversations. We got it. And the best part is that we can measure these signals in real time. Real time. So yeah. we can see what's happening in the brain as it's happening. Exactly. With EEG, we can literally watch how your brain waves change from moment to moment. So what kind of changes are we talking about? Well, for example, when you're in deep sleep, your brain waves are these slow rolling delta waves. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when you're laser focused, they shift to these faster beta waves. That's so cool. So we can actually see those shifts in brain states just from these little electrodes. Yep. It's a window into the brain's electrical symphony. I love that analogy. But while EEG is great for understanding the when of brain activity, can it pinpoint the where? Can it tell us which specific parts of the brain are involved in, say, remembering a childhood memory or composing a haiku? For that kind of detailed mapping, we turn to another powerful tool, magnetic resonance imaging. Exactly. MRI. Unlike EEG, which measures electrical activity, MRI uses magnetic fields and radio waves to create incredibly detailed images of the brain structure. Ah, so MRI is like taking a high-resolution snapshot of the brain. Exactly. And the level of detail we can see is just incredible. Not only can we see the major brain regions like the cortex, the amygdala, uh -huh. right. but we can even see subtle differences in tissue density. Wow. So we're not just seeing the outlines, we're seeing the fine details. Exactly. And this is super helpful for diagnosing conditions like stroke, tumors, or even those myelin defects we were talking about earlier. It sounds like MRI gives us an amazing still life of the brain, which is incredible in itself. But what about seeing the brain in action, those thoughts swirling and emotions firing? Is there a way to capture that dynamism? There is. And it's one of the most exciting frontiers in neuroscience. Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, or fMRI. fMRI. Okay, that's the one I always hear about. Everyone says it can practically read your mind. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but it is pretty remarkable. fMRI is based on the idea that when a specific brain region becomes more active, it needs more oxygen. Makes sense. Like when you go for a run, your muscles need more oxygen, so your heart pumps faster to deliver it. Exactly. And just like we can track blood flow changes in the body, fMRI can detect those subtle blood flow changes in the brain as a way to measure neural activity. So we're not directly seeing neurons fire, but we're seeing the blood rushing to those hardworking neurons. Exactly. That's so clever. And the insights we've gained from fMRI have totally revolutionized our understanding of the brain. We've seen how different brain regions light up when we listen to music, solve math problems, even experience feelings of love or empathy. So we can actually see these complex emotions playing out in the brain. We can see the areas that are active when people experience those emotions, yes. That's mind-blowing. It's like we're mapping out the landscape of our inner world. It is. And it doesn't stop there. We have diffusion tensor imaging, or DTI. DTI. Another brain imaging technique. Yeah, it's another variation of MRI, but this one's like mapping the brain's intricate wiring diagram. Okay, so if MRI is like taking a picture of a city DTI is like mapping out all the roads and highways connecting everything. A great way to put it. By tracking the movement of water molecules, DTI can trace the connections between different brain regions, those highways of information flow that make up our neural circuits. It's incredible how all these tools work together, each giving us a unique perspective on the brain's symphony. EEG gives us the real-time electrical rhythm, MRI provides the structural blueprint, fMRI captures the dynamic dance of activity, and DTI traces those essential communication pathways. It's like we're putting together a giant jigsaw puzzle of the mind. A very complex and fascinating jigsaw puzzle. And that realization, my friends, leads us to the ultimate question. If we can literally see thoughts taking shape, emotions sparking across neural pathways, what does it mean for us as humans navigating this increasingly complex world? That, my friend, is a question that takes us from the realm of science to the heart of what it means to be human. And a question that deserves a whole deep dive of its own. Exactly. And that's a discussion for our final act. Welcome back, Depth Divers. We've been on quite a journey exploring the brain. Really diving deep into the nitty gritty. 
We've talked neurons, glial cells, and all those incredible imaging techniques. The tools that let us see our thoughts and emotions in action. It's like we've been peeking behind the curtain of consciousness. Really makes you appreciate the complexity of it all. It does, and it brings us to the big question, what does it all mean? What does it mean? If we can see compassion lighting up in the amygdala or a memory forming in the hippocampus, yeah. what are the implications? It's a huge question. It feels like a bit of a game changer. For sure. I mean, for centuries, the brain was a mystery, a black box. Right. And now, now we're starting to pinpoint the neural activity associated with things like love, morality, mm. even prejudice. It's like we're cracking the code of consciousness. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. But with any new discovery come new responsibilities. That's what I find both exciting and a little bit daunting. Like what if we could use these tools to diagnose mental health conditions earlier or develop better treatments for addiction? The potential benefits are huge. Imagine if we could understand the roots of violence or aggression. It could revolutionize how we approach some of the biggest challenges we face as a society. Exactly. But of course, there's always the risk of misuse. That's the other side of the coin, isn't it? What if brain scans are used to screen job applicants or determine criminal guilt? The ethical implications are huge. Absolutely. And these aren't just hypothetical scenarios. These are real issues that we need to address now. It's like we've opened Pandora's box. In a way. But it's not about shutting the box. It's about having open and honest conversations about the potential benefits and risks of these advancements. It's a conversation that goes beyond scientists and researchers. We all have a stake in this. Absolutely. It's about shaving the future of neuroscience together. Well said. And I think this deep dive has shown us that understanding the brain isn't just about neurons and circuits. It's about understanding what it means to be human. And that's a journey we're all on together. A journey of discovery. And on that note, deep divers, it's time for us to wrap up this deep dive. Until next time. Keep those synapses firing.